All right, I have a lot of questions to catch up on, and, and all of these are related to upgrading uh, their current cameras. And I'm going to start with uh, Joseph here, a uh, longtime subscriber. Thank you so much. Uh, and there, there's a couple of questions here, but the, the first one is about bringing in a new Pen F. Do I have any insight if OM System is going to make a Pen F2? And I, I, I really don't, but OM Systems, if you're listening, uh, a lot of people ask me about this all the time. I mean, almost every week I feel like I'm getting a question about the Pen F2. Uh, I would certainly buy one, and I know a lot of others that would just buy one without even thinking about it. So I encourage you to work on that. The other thing is, it looks like you dropped your EM5 Mark II, it's your backup to your OM1, and it's uh, starting to wind down and likely is on its last pixels. Uh, as a backup camera to my OM1 and as an everyday street camera, would the Pen F be a better choice versus another EM5 Mark II? So I'm going to try and break this down into more practical reasons why you might choose one camera over the other. Uh, for all intents and purposes, you know, in terms of image quality, they're basically the same. I know this is 16 megapixels and the Pen F is a 20 megapixel, but in practice, there's really not that much difference in image quality. They're both going to give you excellent pictures. All right, so a key advantage that the M5 Mark II has over the Pen F is that it's weather sealed. And that could be a deal breaker right there because the Pen F is not weather sealed. Uh, some other advantages of the M5 Mark II is it has a slightly larger EVF or better magnification, so it's a little bit easier to see. And also it has a, uh, for video work, it has a mic jack, and then you can get an optional grip that has an additional battery and a headphone jack. So you get more extended use time in the field, and also you have some uh, advantages there if you do videography. So I think in a practical sense, the M5 Mark II makes more sense as a backup camera to the OM1. That said, the Pen F does have some advantages because you did mention that you want to do street photography. So one of the potential advantages of the Pen F is the form factor because this is a rangefinder style. So the EVF is all the way off to the left side. So this allows you to put one eye up to the EVF and then have one eye kind of looking around to see what's to, what to take a picture of next, right? Sort of scan the scene. Uh, and I think that's why maybe the rangefinder style is a, is a little more popular for street photography. Now another form factor advantage of the Pen F is in the mode dial. Uh, it's a little more straightforward when you're saving your custom settings. They they call them my sets on these on these models, but uh, you know you have C1, 2, 3, and 4 all clearly labeled on the mode dial. Versus on the M5, you can program the mode dial to save the my sets, but you have to replace say scene mode, art mode, auto mode, etc. to do that. And then the form factor I think is also more conducive to one-handed operation. And what I mean by that is, you know, you have the uh, mode dial here on the right side, right near your thumb. And what you can do is when you have the camera up to your eye, you know, rather than having to bring your hand up here to change the mode, you can just do it right here very quickly and go back. At least that's how I do it. And then of course you have the dedicated uh, exposure compensation dial which is uh, kind of handy if you're shooting in manual mode. Uh, you have a dedicated dial. It's a little easier than, you know, kind of pushing a button to get into exposure comp like on the M5 Mark II. And then I also like when I just look down at the camera, I can see immediately what mode I'm in. Uh, specifically, if you're using one of the custom modes, I can easily see if I'm in C1, 2, 3, or 4. I can also see if I have exposure compensation dialed in. And then, of course, if you use the creative dial, you can see right away uh, if you're shooting in monochrome or not. You don't have to put it up to your eye first. And that may or may not be a big deal, but it's just one of those little things, right? And then of course the Pen F has a plethora of features for JPEG shooters. So if you like to shoot in JPEG, the Pen F has things on it that you really won't find on any other OM system or Olympus camera. Uh, they're found here on what they call the creative dial. So you have a color profile and you have a monochrome profile. These two things are very unique to the Pen F in that on the color side, you can adjust the saturation of individual colors on a color wheel. And then on the monochrome side, you can adjust, um, you know, you have a vignetting feature, you have grain uh, features, and then, you know, so you can add grain in camera at different levels, low, medium, high. And then you can also adjust the black and white filters, you know, because normally you have red, green, blue, yellow. Uh, with the Pen F, you have, uh, I think, eight different uh, colors you can choose from, and you can also adjust the intensity of each individual color. And that's just a lot of fun to play with in the field if you like to shoot black and white photography. 
But most of these things can be done in post-processing, particularly if you shoot in RAW and you use Olympus Workspace. You know, the uh, adjustment of the individual colors, you know, they have a color wheel and workspace. Uh, the monochrome profiles, they're really only available like on the M5 Mark III and higher if you go into Olympus Workspace. So your OM1, if you want to do uh, monochrome profiles, uh, just like the Pen F does, you can do that. But not with the EM5 Mark II files, you're limited to the standard monochrome profile. But I like to do them in the field because there's really nothing like seeing the scene in real time with your own eyes and then making adjustments in camera so you can see exactly what you're going to get. Uh, and you may not need to do post-processing at all. And then one other thing the Pen F has that the EM5 Mark II does not are lens profiles. So if you like to adapt vintage lenses or use those uh, third-party manual focus lenses that don't have the electrical contacts, you can actually assign up to 10 different lens profiles in the camera along with that lens's focal length uh, so that you get two benefits, right? One is uh, the IBIS will be set to the focal length automatically when you select that lens profile. And two, when you upload your images to your photo editing software, that lens profile information is in the EXIF data so that you can see what lens you shot with uh, when you're in your photo editing software. So I think the Pen F makes a great second camera, not necessarily a backup camera. I think as a backup camera, the M5 Mark II makes more sense. But if you want a second camera, uh, there's very few cameras on the market that I think are a better choice than the Pen F. Now that said, if you're looking at this price point, this runs for eight nine hundred dollars on the used market. If you want a backup camera, uh, you can get an EM1 Mark III for the price of this Pen F on the used market. And I think that's something you should strongly consider uh, as a backup camera, say, versus the Pen F. But if the backup camera idea is not quite as critical and you just want a second camera that's fun to go out and do street shooting and things, uh, I would go with the Pen F. All right, I have another similar question here from uh, Nikki Nick, and they asked me, I still own the OM-1 Mark I and the OM-10 Mark II. I think you mean EM-10 and EM-1, but I'm not sure if I should upgrade to the EM-1 Mark II or even the Mark III. I don't make pictures a lot, so would I benefit from upgrading? So I really need more information before I can give you sort of a better answer, but I'll try and generalize a little bit. Uh, and the short answer I would say is probably not. You're, you're probably better off investing in glass, you know, buying some good lenses rather than a new camera body. Because the M1 Mark I and the M10 Mark II deliver excellent image quality. Any uh, improvements that have been made in sensor technology since then are pretty minor, relatively speaking, and probably not worth spending an extra, you know, let's say $600 to $1,000 for a Mark II or a Mark III. Now that said, what improvements will you get in the EM1 Mark II and III, say, over what you already have? And there's really several areas here. One is the overall performance of the camera and feature set, right? So you're going to get much faster uh, continuous shutter with continuous autofocus. The autofocusing system in of itself is uh, much better, uh, particularly for like sports action photography. So if you're thinking about getting into sports action wildlife photography where things are moving around a lot, uh, the Mark II and the Mark III are certainly going to do a better job in that with the phase detect autofocus. You're also going to get better low light autofocusing performance in the Mark II and III. So if you're struggling a little bit with autofocus in, you know, indoors or in low light situations, uh, definitely the Mark II and III are going to uh, have a significant advantage there. And then the M1 Mark II and III have additional features that you don't have in your uh, current models, I don't think. So like in the Mark II, you're going to get the uh, high-res shot mode, in-camera focus stacking, uh, pro capture, 4K video. Uh, and if you go up to the Mark III, you're going to get handheld high-res shot mode. So you don't have to be in a uh, tripod. Uh, you're going to get live ND, and you're going to get starry sky AF, and you're going to get even better image stabilization, uh, up to like seven and a half stops, whatever it is. But it's pretty amazing. So if you're going to upgrade, I would probably say, you know, skip the Mark II if you can and just go for the Mark III. Because besides the other things that I just mentioned, uh, it also has much better autofocusing on face detect. So if you're shooting people a lot, the face detect is much more reliable on the Mark III. So I'll leave it up to you to decide if you think those additional features and performance advantages are worth, say, $1,000 on the used market for a Mark III. 
Uh, but I'd venture to guess that my original recommendation, uh, you're probably perfectly fine with your EM10 Mark II and your EM1 Mark I. All right, we have one more related question here from Cowboy Cartel about upgrading. Uh, you currently have the EM5 Mark III and uh, you're thinking about getting another EM5 Mark III or an EM1 Mark II. And then the other thing you mentioned here is that uh, the only advantage you see to getting another EM5 Mark III would be you can use the same batteries. So this is actually pretty straightforward. The EM5 Mark III is a baby EM1 Mark II. They are basically the same camera save for the form factor. So there's really no downside to going with the EM1 Mark II because, you know, first of all, you're going to get a bigger battery. So I think being able to share batteries is kind of a moot point when you're getting nearly double the battery life in the EM1 Mark II. Also, it's going to be much more comfortable because it has that full-size grip. I mean, the EM1 Mark II and the Mark III are some of the most comfortable cameras I've ever held in my hands. And uh, it's conducive to even using larger lenses and also for hand holding, like you said, you were doing videos. Also, um, functionally, the mode dial is better because it has the custom modes right on the mode dial, C1, 2, and 3, versus the M1 5 Mark III uh, just has the one C mode, and you have to go into the menu to get the other two. And also, the M1 Mark II has an all-metal build, so I think it's going to be much more durable in the long term. And there's also some performance differences as well. For example, like in the Pro Capture, you're going to get a bigger buffer, and you're also going to get uh, faster continuous frames per second. And then not to mention the uh, dual memory card slots and the uh, headphone jack. So definitely get the M1 Mark II, and then your EM5 Mark III will probably end up being your backup camera. But keep in mind, I'm just one person with one opinion, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, but I do appreciate everyone asking me questions, because so they help me help you. And oftentimes I learn as much as anyone else that might be watching. Now in my next video, I have some questions about the uh, handheld high-res shot, and also on the uh, time-lapse mode, so stay tuned for that. And if you guys like these kind of videos, consider supporting the channel and everything I do here. Maybe you can buy me a coffee or make a donation in the links below because they are greatly appreciated and they help me to continue to make videos like this for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.